Fleming from Fleming's Ultimate Garage. Thank you for joining us on today's English video. English video we're doing today. People say all the time, like, hey, can you predict the future of these cars that will someday be collectible, like some of the things that have gone up in value, enormous amounts of money? And the answer is no. However, what I can tell you is this, that low mileage, low production, good looking cars with large engines and the tops go down have always been blue chip investments, right? You think about uh, you know, big block American classics with the top that goes down, always that. This right here, the last of the V12s, as the world moves on to electrification and talks about things like that, these are the cars that people are gonna love and remember. And you talk about cars with low mileage, cars that are well taken care of, great color combinations, and modern as well. And you say, well, tone modern, like, what do you mean when you say that? Well, I say things like climate control, air conditioning, and power windows, and a power convertible top, like all the things that are in a modern car. In a classic car like this, this car's 30 years old today, right? Almost 30 years old. We're just shy of being 30 years old. Think about that, 30 years old. This is uh, a classic already, and these are starting to go up in value. We're watching that happen right now. We're going to take some time, look at the quality of this car, see the detail, cool stuff that comes with it. Why do these cars uh, ride so well? Why do they handle so well? Why do they look so great? And we're going to go over all that, spend some time, and hopefully we'll find a way to get this one in your garage. All right, so we're talking about uh, this car has been metered for authenticity for original paint, which is why these cars become more and more valuable. Cars that have had all the paint redone or an all brand new interior, they're nice looking, right? But when they're original, they're still original. Because why? Because they're only original once, all right? This is glacier white. This is tough to see uh, under these lights, the reflection. But I like to show you factory paint's still pretty cool, and this is still pretty nice. Uh, remember, they were not making a lot of these cars back then, uh, so most of it's hand-built. All right, so let's take a peek under here. Let's say you've decided that this is a collector car that you're going to drive once in a while, and maybe you want to take it to car shows and things like that. This is an important piece of this car because so much of it is original, right? Original cars bring significantly more money than even restored cars. Why do I say that? Well, here's some of the point things that you can see that make a big difference. For instance, these decals that are right here on the fenders, both sides, also on the hood as well, you can't purchase those. Those are actually the VIN stickers that came from the factory that were designed to keep theft down. What does that mean? Well, that means that these stickers and these body panels are the original body panels on the car because if the fender was replaced, it would have a fender on it with no sticker, right? And you would see that that's the case. So we know for a fact that these are the original body panels on the car. We see the VIN is still stamped here as well. And it's nicely detailed. All the original decals are still in place, uh, coolant system, fuel injection system, emissions call out, things like that. What I do hear from some people a lot of times is that they worry that a Jaguar is expensive to maintain. Well, think about this for a minute. Many of the components that are under the hood of this car are actually from General Motors. You just tell them, what? I had no idea. You're right. Most people don't know idea. For instance, the air conditioning systems on Jaguars, older Rolls Royces, uh, Bentleys and things like that are GM air conditioning systems. General Motors transmissions are in a lot of these cars, right? Uh, because they were durable, they were uh, proven, and they were easy to maintain. And so it was a great piece for these uh, cars that had a, a history of maybe not being so reliable to now be a lot more reliable. This engine in here is one of the best 12 cylinder engines out there that makes a right around 300 horsepower, it's 5.3 liters. What's cool too, is that right next to it right here, okay, the same engines in that car too, from the 70s. That's pretty nice, huh? Long history of it, it's beautiful. When you open the hood, just to stare at the 12 cylinders and the fuel injection system, what have you, all the modern conveniences are under here as well, and uh, it just looks super, super nice. All right, so this, uh, listen, we're at the tail end of the styling of these cars, right? 96 is the last year for this car, uh, and this is a 94. The call-outs here are letting you know it's a 12-cylinder. A 12-cylinder, think about that. Today in today's world where a Land Rover has a four-cylinder in it, right? This is a cool piece. The trunks are beautifully done. Like even the carpeting inside here is super high-end. The toolkit is in here. This is really nice because this is the bag for the uh, tonneau cover. This has a switch in the back here in case you don't drive it very often. You can turn the power off so the battery stays fully charged. These smoked taillights in the spoiler are part of the sport pack on these cars, right? 
CD changer is still inside this car, man. We're talking the 90s, right? CDs were super hot during the time. If you didn't have a CD changer, you weren't selling cars. This car has a CD changer wired into the original style stereo there. This is a collector car. Why? Because all of this stuff is still in place. I can check and see for you if the original spare tire is still there, but I see the spare tire and toolkit is there, which is a big deal. Anyway, my point is this, that first off, not only is it great looking, uh, and these cool gas caps, and these smoke taillights, and these dual exhaust, but it's functional, you can use it, and you can have a lot of fun in it. All right, so what's it like to sit inside one of these? Well, listen, remember this car was super expensive for its time, and rightfully so, why? Because when we get inside, you'll see why. Also too, sometimes people worry about whether you're gonna fit or not. For instance, I'm 6'1", and there is a lot of room in here, right? There's a lot of room. But this is cool style Jag. Like, so many of these features were been around for 20 plus years prior to this car coming out, right? When the XS originally came out, uh, it had the same kind of dash setup here with dual ashtrays. And people say, well, why are there dual ashtrays in these cars? Well, the reason why there's dual ashtrays in these cars is because these cars were English. All of this stuff was on that side. And so the smoker was here and so they made it so that it could be uh, world world sold They even took silly things like the like the hood Opener it used to be over there for the rest of the world cars in the US They're over here because we sit on this side, but little stuff like the original stereo system is still in place, right? 47,399 miles showing on the odometer. We're talking about less than 2,000 miles a year. This car has been driven 2,000 miles a year, which is somebody's third, fourth, or fifth car, it's a collector car. This power seats work the way they are supposed to. The power windows are really nice. Full array of gauges, including 160 mile an hour speedometer. They had high hopes for this thing and a 7,000 RPM tack. It makes a great sound. The engines are super smooth and they really are effortless to drive. When you go out in this car, it just looks and feels elegant. All right, so let's close up the video here with just run down a few bullets that I think are important. If I could, please. Electronically metered paint, right? Authentic. Panel still, sh the original panels right here. We looked at the decals of that. Loaded with options, right? Forget the fact that the car is gorgeous looking. Forget all that. We are, that's why you're here, right? But the fact that it matters is we have heated seats. We have power seats. We have power windows. We have cruise control. We have a power top right? We have leather all about, beautiful carpets in and out, toolkits in place, spare tire, like all of the detail stuff. You say, well, Tony, isn't all that stuff supposed to be there? For a collector car, yes. For a regular car, no. And that's my point. My point is this, is this is an awesome, awesome car. I continue to see this car uh, going up in value over time because it's really the last of the run of these, uh, these multi-cylinder engines and it really does make an amazing, amazing sound, but it drives even better. Anyway, call us, 301-816-1000. We'll tell you all about this uh, XJS V12 Cabriolet. And uh, if you don't mind, uh, hit the like button down there below on the screen. And if you would, uh, subscribe to the channel. We got new stuff coming out every day. And uh, maybe share it with your friends. They might like it as well. And I will see you on the test drive. All right, so all the talking and what have you is a lot of this. But really, the fun part is what we're getting ready to go right now. So let's get in the car and go for a drive. So what's it like to drive a 12-cylinder Jag convertible that handles like a dream, that rides even nicer? This is what it's like. Top is down, the breeze is good, you can hear the 12-cylinder. You know, some people, uh, because this car has a couple sets of mufflers on it, reduce, uh, remove one set of the mufflers. So you get some great sound out of that 12-cylinder. You can do that super easy, not a lot of money and then you can pick up that extra sound. Remember, these were designed to be powerful luxury cars, not sporty, sporty sounding cars. And you could add that element because it really, really does just ride. You know, with a four wheel, fully independent suspension, not many cars had that back in the, in the 90s. You know, this is one of the, one of the few that did that. Uh, and the leather, the interior, just riding in this car, man, so smooth. Like, listen, it's like rattle free, right? Rattle free and driving just beautiful. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this drive. I certainly did. 
makes me smile when I drive cars like this that you know that uh, are, are collector cars, meaning that, you know, low mileage, garage kept, driven once in a great while. This is the kind of car you want to get, you know, 100, 150,000 mile cars. There's lots of those out there, but cars that are super low miles and so well preserved like this, uh, this is a very special car.